Welcome back to Nodal Analysis. Today we are going to solve circuit involving supernodes. Supernodes are those nodes where there is an active element present between two non-reference nodes or those nodes which do not have a zero volt voltage. So you can see in this circuit, first of all I have selected this node, this whole node as a reference node or a ground node or a zero volt node because there are most of the elements connected to this node, one, two, three, and four. Four elements connected to this node. Next, there is another voltage source over here. You can see this three volt voltage source, and this is present between these two nodes. I'm going to name these nodes P and Q. And this voltage source is present between these two uh, volt nodes, this voltage source. So, and none of them are reference nodes. P and Q, both of them are non-reference nodes, so these two nodes and this uh, voltage source, they will collectively constitute, collectively they will constitute a supernode. And basically what we are going to do with this supernode is we are going to treat this node as a single node. Uh, the voltages on either side of the voltage source will remain P and Q, but the node, we are going to treat this whole node as a single node. Um, so we, what we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to assume the direction of currents. So I'm going to assume all the currents entering into the super node. I1, I2, I3, and I4. I'm going to assume all the currents entering into the super node. And uh, then I am going to do a step that is a little different from what we usually do in KCL, in KCL, uh, in uh, nodal analysis. Usually we first assume the direction of currents and then we jump to uh, applying KCL at every node. But since this is a super node, what I'm going to do is first of all, you can see that there is a voltage difference that is this that is caused by this voltage source. There is a voltage difference between P and Q and that is, we already know what that is. Here it is. It is a three volt voltage difference between P and Q. So I am going to write P minus Q is equal to 3 volts and I'm going to name this equation as equation A. So it is a little bit simpler from what we were doing in KCL earlier and that uh, uh, you can see here we have already reached our first equation we did not need to apply KCL on each node. Now I'm going to apply KCL instead of applying it on each of these nodes P and Q I'm going to apply KCL on this whole super node. I'm going to assume that this whole node is a single node and then I'm going to apply KCL. So KCL at super node I1 plus I2 sum of all the currents I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 sum of all the currents entering into the super node is equal to 0. Since I already told you I've already told you that I'm we are going to treat this super node as a single node so, sum of all the currents at the super node is equal to 0 by stretch of current law. Then I am going to find the value of all these currents. I1, I2, I3, I4. And that is simply as we usually find the direction of currents in KCL. Since uh, because of this voltage source there is a voltage of 12 volt over here. Because of this voltage source there is a voltage of 12 volt, uh, 6 volts over here from this ground point and since current is flowing in this direction from higher to lower potential so 12 minus p by ohm's law 12 minus p over the resistance then in this 0 minus p so minus p over 10 here it will be 0 minus q minus q over 10 because the voltage over here is q volts and uh, potential over here is Q volts and then similarly higher to lower potential 6 minus Q over 10 the resistance between them. If you do not understand these steps then you can jump to one of my previous videos and then you can check those out and come back to see how we are using those steps over here to solve this circuit. So now I'm going to place these currents over here
and then I'm going to simplify this equation by taking LCM and then simply adding them up. So the resultant equation will be P plus Q is equal to 18. And I am going to name this equation as equation B. Now I'm going to, they, I have two equations and I have two variables and I can easily find uh, their uh, values using any of the rules that we have studied already in mathematics. We can use grammar rule, we can use elimination, we can use matrices, we can use augmented matrices, any method that you know to solve the value of these variables. Even substitution will work. Um, so I'm simply going to add them because I see that there is a minus q, negative q over here and a positive q over here. So if I add these, these two equations up, I will cancel out uh, or eliminate q and uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. P minus Q is equal to 3 volts. P minus Q is equal to 3 volts. P plus Q is equal to 18 volts. Simply adding them up, it will be 2P is equal to 21 volts and P is equal to 15.5 volts. Now from equation A, I will find the value of Q. Q is equal to P minus 3. You can also find this from here. You can say that Q, what will be Q? It is P minus 3 and basically this equation was derived from here. So 15.5 minus 3 and that will be 12.5 volts. Now all that is left is to find value of currents and correct the direction of currents if there is any requirement for that, need for that. So I1 is 12 minus 3, 12 minus 15.5 over 10, that will be minus 0.35 ampere. I2 will be minus P over 10, that is uh, minus 1.15 ampere, minus 1.25 ampere, and similarly minus 0.65 ampere. So uh, now we can see that the direction of all the currents that we assumed should be changed because all of them are less than zero. Since they are all negative, so what I'm going to do is I am going to reverse the direction of currents. This is the actual direction of currents. And then these signs of these negative signs from the answers will be removed if I have changed the direction of currents. If I do not change the direction of currents and let them stay as they are, then these negative current direction negative signs with the values of currents will stay there. So that is all for today, and thank you for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and tell us how we can improve in the comments section down below or you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos or you can click over here to watch the next video in this series.